Hello and welcome to today's session on SketchUp. I'm looking at how to use plants in SketchUp and layout modeling. Uh, today specifically, I'm going to concentrate on bringing plants into SketchUp models. And tomorrow, or the next session, uh, tomorrow morning, I will be dealing with creating plant symbols and how to import images with plants or use images with plants in layout. But let's start by just getting rid of uh, this main screen. And here we have a very simple garden layout. Um, you have to anticipate how you're going to use your plants. What do you want to use them for? Because there are a, oh, there, there's a huge variety of material out there. And the type of plant material that you start adding into your SketchUp models will somewhat be controlled by how you actually want to use it. So simplistically, you might just want to put images of plants uh, or create the impression of plants in a three-dimensional model. And then all you're going to do is do some screen grabs uh, from SketchUp with some planting in, and that will suffice. However, you can start to get a little bit more sophisticated because if I look at some of these plants, you can see where to get these plants shortly. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven plants. And these um, are relatively low polygon. They're not very photorealistic. From a distance, they have certain characteristics. But just to give you an idea of what we're dealing with is if I go into my window and model info, um, I'll just bring that over. And you can see here, there's a panel called statistics. And this is quite useful. Um, one, it's got a nice purge button. So if you ever um, find that your model's running slowly, it's, it's good to occasionally come here and purge the model because you might have some redundant uh, models, components, things you brought in from the warehouse that you then deleted. They still hang around inside SketchUp. So it is useful to come in and remove those. But you can see here, number of edges is nearly half a million edges. So just on these plants alone, and these aren't enough to fill you know, half square. So if you're gonna be planting up a garden, even as small as this little space here with three dimensional plants, you're probably gonna run into trouble. Individually, these plants are quite low polygon. They're, they've got very small file sizes. They're probably um, around the three quarters of a megabyte each. So they don't really bloat the actual model that you store in uh, your hard drive, but um, your RAM is what is responsible for processing these on screen. Calculate what leaf is in front of which leaf is in front of which flower is in front of which plant, etc. And so there's a huge amount of um, processing going on. And your computer can lock, it can freeze. So there's a lot of control processes that have to go on when you're starting to add plants. But um, going back to how you might want to use them, if you just want to give an impression of planting, then what you need to be aware of is that you are unlikely to be able to plant a garden or populate a garden with plants that are actual representations of the planting you have in mind. Here we've got some plants, they're generic. Um, we've got something that looks like a tall spiky grass and it could be one of several species. Um, we've got something here that's um, more um, spire-like and if you zoom, I mean, you could probably guess that it's a foxglove. But from a distance, it could be one, again, of several species. And then we've got a general dark leaf shrub. 
I know we've got another shrub here that you could argue might choose, and you're not going to be able to bring in very species specific plants. So you have to have some latitude. And it's really about creating the effect. So um, where do we get plants from? Um, there are quite a lot of um, resources for plants. And I'm going to take you to a few of them. I will provide a list. Uh, and um, just to remind you, this event is being recorded. So uh, when you go to the recording, that list will be available underneath in the comments section on the Elm Tech YouTube. So you will receive a notification of when um, this is posted. But there'll be a list there of um, some common websites for getting um, your plants. Unfortunately, most of the plants that you have to populate or you might be really interested in, I'm afraid you have to pay for. And some of the fees are quite high. But um, there are free resources and quite a lot of these companies that make these great looking plants also make some freebies. So let's go and have a look at some of those. The first place is obviously the 3D warehouse. So I'm just going to open up the 3D warehouse and I'm going to go to my content page and I'm just going to go to my folders which is where I keep all of my assets and I'm just going to go and look at some plants. So let me go to grasses. Now, here are some grasses and plants, and I've, I've created these folders. I've got about uh, 10 or 15 separate folders for plants. And uh, you might be quite excited looking at some of these, but I have to warn you that I, I look for plants um, for several categories. I'm looking for plants that I can possibly bring into SketchUp. So I'm looking for very low polygon plants. And then I'm also looking for plant material that I can use in other ways. You'll see um, the effect of put, uh, creating planting in SketchUp shortly. But if I want to create a realistic um, planted environment, I will not do it in SketchUp. SketchUp will not be able to handle the level of detail and the lighting and the shadows that um, you need with that many polygons. So I use um, Twin Motion. I create an empty SketchUp model and I then populate Twin Motion or my model inside Twin Motion. That includes grass and trees. Now, occasionally I might want to add my own plants to Twin Motion. And so I can bring in custom plants. And one of the resources I use for bringing in custom plants is the SketchUp warehouse. So SketchUp acts as a vehicle for creating photorealistic imagery. There are some twin motion tutorials coming up uh, in August. Um, so Elm Tech will advise you on when those are coming up. I will probably be talking a little bit about the planting side in twin motion um, in late August. But when you start looking for plants inside the 3D warehouse, you have to be very careful on what you pick. So I'm going to pick this nice miscanthus morning light plants just here. And this one's 356 kilobytes. That is a good file size. So if I download that into my SketchUp, um, that will come in and it will, it will behave itself. Um, I'm not actually going to download it. I've got one very similar, but you just hit that. That is quite acceptable. Now I'm, oops, it did bring it in. <laughs> So let me go back to my warehouse. And sorry about that. Let me go back into, oops, and go back to grasses. Go into my models. Now, um, if I pick uh, this grass here, 30 megabytes for a little tufted grass. Um, most of my entire models are less than 30 megabytes. You occasionally get large ones, but it gives you a feeling for the level of geometry as a comparison that one or three little bundles of grass can have more geometry in them than your entire garden design. So that would be unsuitable to bring into SketchUp and use it, even though it looks great, because the 
amount of processing would just crash SketchUp. And by the time you've added 20 or 30 of these. But what you can do is start looking for some um, really good models. If you just did a general search for grasses or trees in the warehouse, you're not really going to find much. So if I just did trees, up pops a whole load of tree plants. Um, you're really going to try and pick plants by form. So you, you want something that is uh, very tall and column-like, so you know, um, like a conifer. You want some plants that are spire-like, some that are multi-stem, um, some that are, are maybe cherry-like, some that have got a, a closed head, some that have got open heads. And that's how you'll be selecting the plants that you want to find in SketchUp. And you need to put them into your folders. And that way you don't end up spending a long time hunting them down. You can, if I just put tree in here and just went down the big long list, then I am quite limited in what I find. But if I find a plant, for instance, like this one here, which is a palm of some description, it's called a tree, but it looks quite detailed. And I click on it, right at the bottom, it says more details. And when I go into this, um, I can access this person's um, model stream. So they may have created it or they may have created collections. So if I go, click on this person, then we may see, well, they haven't, that's unfortunate. Maybe we can go and find somebody else. Maybe this person here. And okay, here we go. This person has uploaded a whole load of other models. And this is quite common. If you see a model that you like, and then you can you follow the links a bit like using Pinterest. When you get to the author's um, individual page, you can see that they haven't just created plants, they've created lots of other objects. And it's those some of those other objects, whilst you're looking for a tree, may prove quite interesting. So we've got some small plants here. Um, he's done lots of interiors and furniture, and I'm quickly scrolling through to see if there's anything here that would be useful in landscaping. And maybe some outside furniture, some table and chairs, parasols, um, but not many trees. There we go, there's three or four here. Now if I just pick one of these, let's see, this one just 761 kilobytes. It's a, it's a very good size model. Um, I could probably put quite a lot of those in without it causing any problems. So the best way of searching for material in the warehouse is to find a couple of models that you really like the look of and then start following the links and try and get back to the main author. Now, um, I'm going to um, just list a few of the other websites. Um, things like XFROG are really good, um, Evermotion, VizPark, um, Dynascape, Envirographics, Quixel Megascans, Glow Plants. Um, they are very, um, they're very good. I'm just going to bring up a different website. So let me go and I'm just going to show you um, a couple of the other sites. So if I go to Glow Plants. I'm just bring that window in and I'm just going to go through their collections. And these are, um, when you start getting into this level of uh, 3D um, CAD plants, then most of the time they are actually named by species. And this is an Australian company, so it has a bias towards Southern Hemisphere plants, but you've got things like Agapanthus. So if I just click on the Agapanthus, for instance, and you can see that there's a whole, you get a whole bundle of plants in different sizes. And at the moment they've got a big discount and they're 15, you know, $16. That's US dollars, not Australian dollars. So don't get excited. Um, and they claim to have 
in some of these, they claim to have SketchUp versions. They do, but they are enormous. You know, just um, one tray or an Agapanthus would be huge, even though it will work inside SketchUp. So these are not for use inside SketchUp because your computer just won't be able to handle them. But you might be able to put them uh, bring them in as other kinds of uh, materials. So this one is good for Corona and V-Ray. Um, plants that have FBX, uh, you can take into um, things like um, V-Ray and Twin Motion. So they're really um, high-end render type plants, but they do occasionally convert some for use in um, SketchUp. Now, this is the Sketch, excuse me, <clears throat> SketchUp texture club uh, i've mentioned this before as a tremendous resource for um textures so it's worth joining up it's free um probably twenty thousand textures in here which are sketchup ready but under 3d models and if i scroll down they've got a vegetation section so they don't just do textures there's um collections of trees in here so oh, i'm just going to randomly pick collection three these are free um, and the zip file is about 11, nearly 12 megabytes, but there's, you know, there's about 30 trees in here, I think, maybe more. So they are pretty good models. So you can see some of them, um, they behave a, a pretty good source. And the other one I'm going to show you is the Sketchucation. Sketchucation is one of the largest forums for everything SketchUp. Um, and if you go to their shop and go to their models, they have a landscape section. And this is just a page from uh, the planting. You have to be quite careful in here. Um, again, these are paid for. And if I pick, I don't know, uh, this 65 trees, it's $12. Um, Rich O'Brien, I think Rich O'Brien actually runs the Sketchucation website. Um, and this one has uh, trees and grasses, so $12. Um, you can uh, join this website. Um, there's a, a, they offer a premium service. So if you're going to download lots of plants, it might be worth becoming a premium member for about 30 pounds. I can't quite remember what the fee is. And then you get access like this and you get lots of the plants for nothing. Um, some of them, I'm just going to go back to the shop. Uh, go, let me just go back in fact. And I'm going to pick, I don't know, this nice clematis. Um, and you might think, oh, it, it's going to be $10. It's a great plant. It's 229 megabytes. So whilst it will work in SketchUp, it's really not designed. It will it will drag your model down, so you won't be able to use it. So it does look really good. Um, lots of variation. Unfortunately, I think you would struggle with it. Now, um, I mentioned one company, Ever Evermotion, and you, some of these you can just. Uh, just buy an individual material. Some of them you have to uh, sign up as a member of the website on a monthly basis. So I'll come to one of those in a minute. But Evermotion plants, I have noticed, um, they do something where they, they, the people who create the plants make the plants for particular outputs. So it might be for uh, V-Ray, it might be the, um, some of the plants are for 3D um, Studio Max. But if you spend enough time on there, you'll notice that if you go to the 3D warehouse, uh, the SketchUp 3D warehouse, that quite a lot of the plants that are being you have to pay for are available if you find the original author's pages in the 3D warehouse. But it can take some tracking down. Um, they are high poly. There is a way of bringing in high polygon plants into SketchUp and where you strip out the polygon count, you simplify them, but that's a whole level um, and you're still gonna end up with quite high uh, polygon count plants. So stick to some of the other freebies. Now, going in the opposite direction, I'm going to just go to a website called Dynascape. And I'm hoping um, 
Dynescape is a, an interesting piece of software, and it's um, it's a hybrid, and it uses AutoCAD at the front end for landscape design and SketchUp as an integrated part in the back end for doing all the 3D. And it's sort of a seamless thing. When you design something in 2D, it pops up in 3D in a, essentially a SketchUp model. But what they have is a very large resource page. So we have components for SketchUp, and we have all of these different categories here. So I'm just going to log in. Hopefully it remembers me. And I'm going to go to, um, where we go to? Perennials. Here we go. And what we have is 20 or 30 pages of perennial plants. And they keep adding to them. These are very, very low polygon. And you could put quite a lot of these into a model. So let's just pick the first one. Again, by name, um, you can see the, a little image and you can see the file size, 88 kilobytes. It's just really, really low. Um, I've already downloaded some of these into the model, so you will get to see them, but there's, there's loads. Um, this is not a cheap website. Um, you have to pay a joining fee and there is an, a rolling uh, monthly fee of about I think it's just gone up to about $10 a month, but the initial joining fee is in the order of about $500. Um, so it's how serious do you want to uh, take your planting models? If you really look around in the warehouse, you can find most of what you want. So just as an example, lots of different kinds of echinacea. Um, Equisetum is quite a new one I've noticed. And then we've got a whole load of trees. So we've got um, I can't quite remember. We've got about, you know, they're alphabetical. So 11 takes us up to G. Um, so there must, I think there are 19 or 20 pages of perennials and there must be 12, 15 pages of trees. And then we've got succulents and tropicals and um, we've got vines. So we've got bougainvilleas. Um, some of these are not great. Um, I tend to use the same ones again and again. So anyway, that's uh, Dynescape. So I'll just come out of that. And I'll just drag that back across. Right, let's get back to actual planting models. To import a model, a plant model into SketchUp, um, it depends on who um, created it as to the condition it's in. Um, sometimes they come in and they're absolutely fine, perfectly usable, frequently they don't. Now, anything that you download from the 3D warehouse uh, comes in as a component. So these objects, um, some of these came in from the 3D warehouse, uh, ones like this. This came in from Dynascape. There's a white halo around. Around this. But if I go to my window and my styles menu, and I go um, into the styles and I go to edit, at the bottom, it's got material transparency. And usually by default, this is set to faster. And if I hit the pull down and set it to nicer, then you can see that immediately disappears. But that means it's going to take much more processing to resolve the edge details. So I'm going to stick to faster. So it's only a visual thing. That's not how the um, the printing or if in your presentations it will appear. Um, one thing you'll notice I don't have shadows switched on, and I would almost have shadows switched on when I'm doing planting, because adding shadows adds another burden to your computer processing. And I try not to have um, textures switched on. So. You you can just model, it really does lighten up the burden on your, but we'll keep it on just for visibility. Now, these plants you'll notice are soft. If I zoom in, they haven't got edges. And if platform, which I found as well, this one does. And an effect that, that can have, I switch to just for the sake of black and white mode, because most of my planting doesn't have edges, I can't see it. But this one, I can, which is fine if I'm zoomed in. But if I'm zoomed out, looking at a whole garden, all I see is a mass of black. 
So what I'm going to do here is just show you how to switch off the edges. So I need to go into the model. So double click. And I just need to drill down until I get to individual elements. So here's a petal. And if I pick the petal and its edge, actually, I, I imagine all of the petals are derived from this one. And then if I select only the edge, um, a neat way of doing that is using TomTom's edge tools extension, but select only edges. And then I can say edit hide. And then that will switch all of the flowers. And I'm just going to do the same for the, the leaf. So I'm going in. All these leaves are derived from one leaf. So I'm going to select only the edges again. Whoops. And then I'm going to go up to edit and hide again. And now, oops. We have a softer version of the plant. If I want to use black and white mode for whatever reason, sometimes if I switch on the shadows, you get the hint of a plant without actually getting any of the textures or even the geometry. Um, and that can be that can be quite an interesting effect. Um, that could be quite useful if you were wanting to maybe draw over a printout. If you do the plants in this way, you get a sense of where you might want to put your pencil work. But we're going to keep the shadow switched off and we'll actually keep our textures. Now, these, as I said, have come in as components. This plant um, isn't a single component. Um, it's made up of lots of other bits. So I'm going to make this into a, a single component because there's a couple of little things that are really useful. So if I select all of this geometry, you can see that it's made up of lots of different blocks. I'm going to put my right hand mouse over it and say make components. And I get a little pop up menu. So the first thing that's quite important is I'm going to give it a name. Now, I can, I'm just going to call this shrub. Um, I don't know, can't remember how many shrub elements, but I'm going to call it shrub 10. I could give it a description. Um, but what's really important here is set component axis. axes. Uh, you'll notice that the little axis of this is set to one side. Now, when we come to place plants, it is the local axis of the component that determine how it's placed. So if that axis is in the middle of the plant where it meets the ground, then when you click, that is where the plant will be placed. If the axis is to one side by default, then when you click a point, it's the axis that gets put onto that point. So you can end up with plants that are not quite in the position that you want. So I'm going to set them. So if I hit set component axes, I've now got a floating axis and I'm going to zoom in and place my axes on the trunk of this plant. Doesn't matter. So long as blue goes up and green and red are on the ground, we're okay. So I'm going to click once to place the corner and twice and then one more click places the third axis. And so it's then saying everything okay. And I'm just gonna say create. And now my axis is in the center. Um, I would do that for every plant that I import because what you don't want to do is get caught out. I've done that for each of these plants. Now, if I'm gonna start planting up this space, I could take a plant and I could grab it and I can place it. Um, sometimes it goes on the ground. Sometimes you end up with it slightly in the ground. Sometimes you end up with it up in space. And what you usually can't determine is initially whether plants are on the ground or not. And it's only when you rotate that you can see whether they're hovering. So a really simple way to make sure that individual plant placements are on the ground is pick the plant that you want, pick 
not necessarily either pick right at the bottom one of these lower leaves and then move it into position or pick close to your plant and then your mouse will pick on the plane and make sure that when you click your mouse will then place the object on the plane you're sort of not using the geometry of the object um, as such, you're picking an external reference point. Now, the other thing um, that you can do, and it came in in 2020, is when you pick an object like a group or a component, it has a blue box. And in 2020, the corner points of those blue boxes became selectable. And that is the lowest extremity of the group or the component. So when I click the corner, I will know that that is definitely very slightly hovering um, whoops, um, above the ground. So I'm okay with that. Now placing plants individually is gonna be quite um, tedious. So the first thing I would do is set up some tags. And oh, I think my computer just seems to be doing a backup. Here we go, that's better. I would set up some tags and I usually uh, break my planting tags into two distinct categories. The first one is I have a tag based on plant type. So if I've got grasses or perennials or shrubs or trees, then I will create an individual tag for those. But I will also then create a, another tag system, which is based on the beds. So what I want to be able to do is switch off all beds or individual beds, because it's pointless doing a presentation when half of a garden is behind you and you don't need to have those plants visible. So the computer will still be doing the calculations for things that weren't visible on screen. So you can switch off everything that you don't need. The other thing that I would do is have what I would call a working scene. So you, scenes will become important as we move into creating imagery in layouts and preparing for presentations. But a working scene is just raw geometry. We don't have any shadows. We haven't necessarily might not have any textures applied. Um, we're not really worried about how it looks. We're worried about how it performs. And so working, having a working scene means that I don't necessarily need to have all of my stuff turned on. I can create individual scenes as I progress. So if I brought in, um, a good example would be a tree, but let's say it was this grass. And well, no, let's, let me go and get a tree to, to make the demonstration. So I'm gonna go and bring in a tree. And we will have uh, this tree that we had a look at earlier. So I'm just gonna download this. And there it is. Now, sometimes trees can come in, particularly trees, they can come in enormous or tiny. So you might need to rescale them to the size that you want. And if you hit the scale tool or S on the keyboard, you get these green handles and you can make the plant bigger or smaller. A really simple trick, if you know approximately the height of the tree is I would make a cylinder, approximately the size of the canopy that you were able to judge if you did a site visit, and then also the approximate height. And then I would make that a group so that, and then I can um, go to my X-ray mode. I can take my tree, put it inside, and then I can scale my tree up and down until it approximately fills I've just noticed that my tree uh, was a bit high. So maybe I just need to scale it and maybe go up a little bit. And then I can just play around with the handles. And then I can just delete the cylinder and my tree is approximately the right size. But placing plants. There are a whole load of um, little plugins that are really useful. In fact, um, I'm gonna look at one which was updated only a few days ago. 
So the first um, plugin I'm going to look at is um, Alexander Schreyer's. Um, he's on the 3D warehouse. This is free. There's a, a nice plugin called Place Shape. So one, it's a way of creating lots and lots of different shapes like spheres and half domes. But um, it has this little house icon uh, near the bottom. And if I pick a um, one of my shapes, let's pick the, the foxglove. If I pick the icon, then if I just simply click, wherever I click, it places a plant. And it will place it on the surface. I was going to say, excuse me, on the surface of the geometry. So you have to be careful that you don't pick the top of the plant below. So this would happen. So when you're placing the plant, I've just come out of X-ray mode. Um, I just have to be quite careful, but it's, I find it really useful um, to get in. And if I've done another plant, planting process, I might just want to fill in a few holes. And this is a neat way of doing that. What it does is it simply places a direct copy of the plant. So there is no variety, but that's not always um, a bad thing. If I want variety, let me just take that plugin away and bring in another then there is a tool set called the JHS Power Bar, which has a whole load of tools. This is free. Um, JHS Power Bar comes from the Sketchucation um, plugin down plugin um, extension library. Um, but this has some right at the end of the toolbar are some interesting tools, and there's some in the middle as well. But if I pick some of these plants, if I pick um, th this one scales, so this randomly scales my plants, this randomly rotates my plants, and this one randomly scales and rotates. And so um, that one's quite neat because it then adds that variety. But the plants need to be placed in the first instance. So I'm just going to uh, remove those. And I'm just going to, um, did I, yeah. Now there is another plugin um, on this same, which um, is all about putting um, control points. So here, this little um, end plugin, I think third from the end, just allows me to put in some points. And wherever you click, um, that's where the points go. So you have very specific control which is why it's important that the, your axes for your plants are in the middle. Now, you'll notice that they are still all blue. They're still selected. If I pick um, one of my plants, and then I run the little plugin. Whoops, I didn't select all of my points. Pick my points, pick my plants, and then hit the, the plugin, sorry, the little extension tab right at the end it places the selected object, the selected component onto those center points. So that's another way of applying plants. And then you can select all of those and you can run the random scale or in this case, you know, random scale and rotation. So you can get much more naturalistic planting. And at the moment, um, you'll notice my computer is moving relatively freely. Now, um, we can start to get a little bit more sophisticated. So I'm just going to delete those. And I'm going to bring in um, another tool. I'll take out the JHS power bar. This one is random tools. And it um, it's just come out. So the update has just come out. I wasn't aware of the previous version. Um, just to um, emphasize how you learn, because this one's full of loads of stuff. There's lots of different bits in here. The same with the JHS power bar. These plugins um, are take quite a lot of learning. And the best way is to go to YouTube and um, watch the SketchUp um, skill builder sets, because they focus on um, some of these extensions, 
but there's also an excellent um, YouTube uh, channel called um, Tutorials Up, and he focuses a lot on just the extensions. And certainly, this Random Tools one has been featured um, just recently. And Alexander Schreyer, who writes this, has just put up um, a YouTube channel as well explaining how to use them. But if I pick, um, let's go and pick the Digitalis again. What I can do is pick a surface and then pick a plant. And you can guess that that's the one in the middle. Now, I've made these into individual groups just because I treat the planting as different to the rest of my model geometry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just explode this group because that's the way it works. You have to have an ungrouped geometry. Pick your plants and then it then asks you how many copies do you want in this area? What's the maximum random rotation? So 360, do you want a scale factor? So some of them will be, it's plus or minus half. So there's a, a variety. And then you can have normal or up. So we're going to go with normal. You can. What's great about this is where do you want to place the copies? And I'm going to say place the copies on my perennial, or in this case, I think we're on, um, we could put it on bed. I think that was bed two. So as I create my plants, they will automatically be added and I don't need to go and select them all and then put them on the beds afterwards. And so I'm going to say, okay. And okay, up to four, up, sorry, it's created four. I asked for it up to 10. Now I think if I pick multiple plants, um, let me see, I'm gonna say, I'm just gonna go five at the moment. I'm gonna say, okay. And it's only picking one. I thought it might randomly add from a variety of plants, and it's not. It's just added the last one. Um, there's a bit of playing around with it. I'm not that familiar with it, but it looks like what's really useful is it will only add plants to the defined area. Which brings me to another um, plant plugin. So I'll just get rid of these. And that one is. Um, compo spray, or I think it's called comp spray or compo spray. And um, it's not one that I use um, at all. I use other means of doing this, but I just thought I'd highlight this one. And this one is from the Sketchucation website. And I think it's by Didier Burr. And the way that works is um, when I click on the icon, um, quite a sophisticated panel pops up and it's asking me, it will spray up to eight different components. So it's asking me um, which ones do I want? So in this case, I've got a Baptisa, I've got uh, this Miscanthus grass, and I've got a Yuncus, which is this other grass. Um, and then I could say component four, I want to be so I'm picking from my list. And these are all of the components inside um, this session of SketchUp. So some of these you think, well, I didn't create. And that's because these plants are made up of sub components and groups. So um, I'm going to pick, um, uh, I don't know, whatever. We had shrub 10 before, didn't we? So I'm going to pick shrub 10. And then you get to spray the pattern. So circle, and then you get um, the destination. So do you want to put all these plants onto a particular layer? And the answer is, let's say I'm going to put them all onto bed uh, two, I think. So again, I've got this ability. And then I can apply a pressure. The bigger the pressure, the, the more dense the, the spray effect. And I think that's pretty much all we'll go with. And then I can say spray. And I simply pick my area and it applies those plants to the area. But I don't have that much control. It, it obviously is it's keeping some of them quite distant. And I'm sure there's a refining technique there. 
but um, a slightly more refined version is if I use a plugin, I'm going to go to it, sorry, uh, called Ray Tracer. And Ray Tracer is by TomTom. And this is free from the extension warehouse. And it's got something called Spray Camp. And what I need to do is select a group. And I'm going to pick a range of plants. And hopefully, this is the right way to do it. Um, pick Spray Cam. And what it's asking me is how, what's the radius of the, the, the spray cam, of the spray effect? So I'm going to uh, come down to three. And I just accidentally hit my space bus. So I'll do that again. So back to extensions, ray trace of spray cam. And I'm going to type in, let's say, 2.5. So there's my spray cam. And when I spray, you can see that it's spraying these dots. And then when I let go, oh, like an idiot, it picked up the wall at the back. So I'll undo that. I'll try it on. Let's make that into um, make that one into a group. So pick. That's better. So now when I go to extensions, ray tracer, spray cam. Um, make it 2.5, and then I can just spray in my plants. Oh, I picked up the bottom again. Okay. Um, you get the idea. But one of the things that's happening is, apart from me not using it correctly, is that it's overspraying the shape. So if I um, have these on their own group, and then on their own um, tags and switch them off. Uh, I've got a garden one here. Um, let's say, here we go. What I've got here is just one bed. And I all the other beds are on groups, and I've switched them off. Now, when you spray with this, it will only put the plants onto geometry. If there's no geometry, then the plants, I'll just get rid of this tree the plants don't stick. So if I pick my shapes and then I go to my extension and spray can and I make it two meters. And now when I spray my shapes, there we go. I've now got an instant bed. And when I switch on my other bed geometry, there we go that defines um, the planting. And you get that slight overspill, which is you know, obviously quite naturalistic. That was obviously way too dense. Um, I think um, if I go back to ray trace and spray can, no, um, but you are, you can set the density of how many points it generates. Um, it's quite fun to use as well. And it will spray onto, um, so if I take this geometry, just move it over to one side. But if I now apply the same thing onto a slope geometry, so I'm just going to pick a uh, grass and uh, one of those, go onto my extensions, ray tracer, and um, two. And there we go. Now you'll notice that it's kept the plants vertical. They haven't been twisted as the um, the terrain moves. So um, there's a few other settings in the ray trace. Um, we can do a control point and we can drop geometry onto terrain and we can align um, plant geometry by its coordinates onto those center points. So we can create the center points using something like the JHS power bar, and then we can put plants specifically where we want. But most of the time you're looking for a generic planting system. Now, I'm just going to show you um, another technique. Let me just get rid of that. And I'm just gonna get rid of, oops, wasn't good. Better. 
and then I'm going to get rid of these plants here. And then, right. And here we go, planting blocks. Now this is a slightly different technique. This is, um, it works well in several situations um, in that you create a predefined model, uh, an assembly where this thing is grouped and in it are some, you know, daisy-like thing, Nigerian, some green, quite rough and shaggy, some of them are more dome-like. We've got a grass that could be one of half a dozen, and then we've got some generic firs, and then we've got these little mounds. So we've got some high-level plants and some low-level. Creates a general planting system, um, all pretty low polygon, and you assemble them into a group. And you might create three or four versions, you know, depending on you know, types of thing. One might be more flowery, one might be more Mediterranean. So you, you just create some generic blocks. And then you move these blocks and you, you don't place the plants, you place the plane on which the plants are set. And then because it's all grouped, then you can just move copies. I know you're thinking it's probably looking quite repetitious, but what you can do is you can rotate or flip. So if I flip that along the, uh, it's probably going to be along the red. Um, it's not, it's probably going to be along the green. So I flip it along the green. It, um, you can flip the geometry and then you can scale it. So if I maybe want to just drag this over here and you can relatively simply, you can create some random randomization, or you could, you've got three or, three or four different versions of these. You can create one, put in a third, put in a second, uh, and, and just generally mix them up. Um, that can be quite useful because you're not really worried um, about where the plants are fitting, and you're really thinking about the base. It's, it's getting that base in, and if it, you think there's too much spill, then when you move, you're moving the whole block and unlike regular geometry, it doesn't matter if these plants really overlap and create a dense effect. Now, I'm just going to open up a previous model just to show you what that looks like um, in a, a larger planted space. So this is um, a model I created as part of the introduction to landscape design and um, using SketchUp. But um, in here, I've got all, a whole load of different scenes. What they are doesn't really matter, but you'll notice that the first one is a working scene and it has none of the um, peripheral geometry, the geometry that makes this look a little bit more like a space. This is the geometry that I need to work on, not that I need it to look pretty. So if I switch on, let me just go down and I've got some plant blocks in here. And there are the plant blocks. This is exactly the same plant block that you saw before. And I can now switch on my textures and then maybe we'll go to a presentation scene. Now this will take a few seconds and let me just switch off some of this other stuff. We don't need to see scale bars. Now, this is moving quite slow. And that's just because of the amount of polygons. But I can set up a nice point of view, maybe just something like this. And then I'm going to switch on the shadows. Oops, here we go. And there we go. So when you're in certain points of view, even though all of these plants are quite repetitious, you're, I think it's, it's about creating the sense of planting, not necessarily the full species. 
if you're starting to do the full species effect, then you might need to go into other software. Um, I'm not really trying to create um, the sense of a planted garden. I'm trying to create the sense of a space of a garden that somebody um, is willing to progress with. And then you, I would keep maybe trees as a separate item. So if I just bring in a switch on the tree, uh, this is a 2D tree. Um, it's not the greatest quality. And I can just maybe swing this round. Whoops, just move in. And there's the, yeah, we're getting decent shadows. Um, but it is quite burdensome on my computer processor. So I wouldn't have those switched on. I would set up my scene exactly the way I want it. And then I would open up my, um, whoops, go back to my working scene. Set up the point of view that you want, and then start to bring in plant blocks. Start to bring in um, um, you know furniture. Start to bring in fence panels. Then switch on textures. Then switch on shadows. And here we go. We're waiting four or five seconds and go. I like that. That's what we're going to do view animation add scene creates a new scene so we're going to call this presentation three so i'm going to rename it and we'll call it presentation three and i'm going to go back to my working scene and that's what i'm going to do my modeling in so the working scene allows me to switch out of those presentation i don't need to go back into my tags or layer panel and start switching lots and lots of different things off if i want to go back to that image i simply oh, click the presentation you can see it's it's now realizing everything it's got to do which is switch on things like the furniture and then i'm realizing why do i have furniture switched on why do i have my house switched on i can't see them so you can switch off some of the things like the furniture and the house and all those and then all you would simply do is go to your presentation and then update to record that change if you start rotating this then you just have to let it finish otherwise it will sit there um, and you you know on a mac you get that spinning beach ball of death um, but you get the the, the constant waiting to process i don't use a particularly powerful computer um, i'm just using a standard imac uh, i've got 32 gigabytes of ram and you know, this is verging on the limits um, of my processing so it's not about getting more ram it's about being smart in the way you work because if you have more ram then you'll just work on gardens twice as big that are that have got more planting and so you end up repeating the same problem so you know the, t the trick really is switch off textures, switch off shadows, switch off plants, and then your model will be really fast. The rest is really about you know, the sales pitch to your, your clients. Right, our time's up. I'm going to concentrate tomorrow on taking these images and making presentation images from them and then using them in layout and how to start creating planting plans and identification of where these plants go in drawings. So we'll be using a little bit of layout and we can do some of the work in SketchUp as well. So I hope that uh, you'll join me. But if there are any questions, then I'm willing to try and answer them. Hi, Paul, it's Lauren from Altec. Uh, thank you once again, that was fantastic. Can't wait for tomorrow now to find out some more. Um, we've just got one question here from Sue. Hi, Sue. Um, she is asking, where do you say your plants groups are shown towards the end of the session? So the ones where you bring in a whole group in a block, that makes sense. Um, OK, I, uh, I think I understand the question. I have a process and it doesn't matter whether it's a block of plants or, as you can see on screen, a pergola. In this particular project, um, let me get my mouse active. I might have put together um, a design for a pergola, or even have put together a little block of plants. 
I would take that, make it into a group, and then I would save that design into a separate folder called pergolas. So I've got folders for pergolas and water features and all sorts of different things. And one of those folders is for planting blocks. So that if I want to bring in a pergola that I've already designed um, or a planting block, then I would simply go file, import, um, and go navigate to where I keep all of those assets. Or you can simply open up that um, session that has the pergola or the planting blocks in and cut and paste from one um, session of SketchUp into another. So you're really only trying to do these things once. And I've, even though I made this plant block as a test for this particular um, uh, session, then I have used that plant block already in two or three projects. So having these assets already created um, really does speed up your process. Great, thank you, um, Paul. We'll take just two more questions. Um, we're a little bit over. Um, uh, Sue so says thank you. Um, Rob, hi Rob. Um, uh, which of these options do you use regularly? Um, what is which is your preferred tool? I'm not sure. Do you understand that question, Paul, or do you need more I'm clarity? Guessing it's which of all of the options I've shown do I use on a regular basis? Um, uh, I think so. I of all of the plugins, I think the um, the ray trace is really nice. One. It's one of those plugins that is actually fun to use. It's a bit like the soap bubble. You, know, you, you enjoy using it, it brings a smile to your face. Um, so I like using um, th that one. Um, I also use the plant block method because I, I don't have to keep bringing in individual plants. I always line them up down the side of my garden to see that I've got a, a, a variety. But if I've already got them on plant blocks, I've already taken the pain out of any of that thought process. I can just bring the blocks in. And even if I don't like something in one of the blocks, I can just double click into it and take something out and put something in or just throw the occasional random plant that's slightly different to give it some variety. OK, perfect. A um, few more questions. Uh, where do you switch off textures? That's from Suzanne. Hi, Suzanne. Textures at the top of the screen. Um, I've got two. I, I've, I try to keep as fewer icons on my screen as possible. Um, sometimes, if you go to uh, YouTube, you'll see somebody's put their entire icon collection because they're very proud of it. But um, <laughs> these are sets of standard collections. So the one with the little houses is called the standard views, and the one with all of these little cubes, there are seven of them, is called styles. And they're both on a Mac and PC under the view command. On a, a Mac, it's under um, uh, large tool, sorry, large tool sets. It's under the customized toolbar. And a big panel appears, and you've got the standard views and styles at the top. I'll just say done to that. And on a PC, uh, you go to view, uh, tool palettes, and then you've got a pull down menu and you tick the sets that you want. And so styles will be towards the bottom because they're alphabetic and it will put that little panel. And the one that's got the stripes on is the one that has allows you to see the textures, but really you ought to be modeling with just the base color, which is the one to the left of it. Great, okay, thank you. Um, we will take one more question, um, and then if, if we didn't get to your question, feel free to email and um, we'll try and sort it out. Uh, I don't know how if this this will be a quick question or not. This is Rebecca saying I've had major issues with floating plants. Any quick fixes? <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, um, I thought that would be a long question. Uh, floating plants can be a real problem. Um, quick fix is. When you, you zoom in and pick the lowest leaf when you're um, selecting a plant, um, I don't think I've got any plant, geez, plants. Let me just see if I've got a plant to switch on. So um, let me go, here we go. So here's a plant. I'm just going to move it up into space. Right, so this plant is now floating. 
don't randomly pick. Um, I'm hoping that you're using 2020 because the real, the easiest way if you're using SketchUp 2020 is if I'm going to move this plant, hit the move icon and pick the corner of the blue box. It's a selectable point. And then when you click, if you leave your mouse for half a second, it comes up with on face, which means your plant is going to be virtually on the geometry. And once you've got three or four plants in, you won't see that they're just hovering 20 or 30 millimeters above the surface. And then you can pick the corner points and make a, you know, drag a copy and you'll be fine. So that's the easiest way if you're going to place plants individually. Okay, perfect. Um, right, let's leave it there. We've run over a little bit, but um, Paul will be back tomorrow, same time, same place. Um, thanks, Paul. And thank you everyone for attending um, on this Monday morning. Uh, just a quick reminder that they are all being uh, recorded. Um, so you can go at your own pace and, and refer back. And um, Elm Tech will send out an email uh, either on Tuesday afternoon or Wednesday, um, and that will direct you to the YouTube recordings. Um, we also have Paul's other session that he did back in, I think it was April, May. Um, mm, I think it was April. Yeah, that they'll direct you to those. Plus, um, we'll link you up with any more training uh, that Paul offers. But um, in the meantime, uh, thanks, Paul. Okay, thank you very much. And I hope that I'll join, see you joining me in the next session. Great. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Bye.